now that we have our basic master page set up, which we can definitely go in and edit and make modifications to, we can start, uh, you know, bringing in images and, you know, floor plans, renderings, and all that kind of thing. Before we do that, I want to point out something that you might find useful. So we've been looking at our pages menu here, and this is really how we're looking at our document. Notice that behind that tab, there's layers. You also see it down here. Layers can be very useful in InDesign. Um, you don't use them in the same way that you might use them in Photoshop, but they can be very handy. So everything that we've drawn up into this point, which is really just a couple of rectangles on our master page, has all gone on the default layer one. Okay, And so if I happen to go into the master page, and highlight something. We'll notice that the frame around it is blue. Okay, it's very light and a little hard to see, but you'll see that in the layers menu, right here, there's a little blue line. So everything on that layer uh, has a blue frame. Once we have objects on this layer, it's really not a bad idea to go in and just lock that by clicking this little box and then making a new layer on top of that to start putting other objects. We can always unlock this layer and come in and make edits, but it really prevents us from inserting images into our master page and things like that, which can be really easy to do and really frustrating when it happens. So I've just locked this layer, which means right now I can't make any changes to it, and I will make a new layer on top of that. Notice this one is red, so anything I bring in on this layer will have a red frame around it. So I can go back to Pages and just get out of that, that master right now. But I don't have to be in the master to lock or unlock it, so just be aware of that. So make sure layer 2 is highlighted if that's what you're going to do. Um, so that'll be the layer that you're working in. Okay, so there's different ways to bring in an image into InDesign, uh, but one of the easiest ways to do it is just come up and do a file and place. So I'll come up to the word file and select place. Once I do that, I can come in and pick whichever image that I want to bring in. I am going to do a floor plan. And notice here I have a JPEG version of it and then a PSD. So the PSD version, I've gone in and cut out the background. So that's the file that I want, and I covered doing that in a Photoshop demo. So I'll just pick my floor plan. I'll say open. And then you'll see that it's actually attached to my mouse. So if I had other objects on my page right now, I would need to be careful because if I clicked on any shape, this image would want to go inside of it. So sometimes it's safe to actually click outside on your drawing board, if you will. See that this has a red frame around it because I made that new red layer. All right, so now we have our floor plan and the background is cut out. So it gives us a lot of options in terms of graphics that we can do. When you bring an image in, it will come in at whatever default size that it actually is. So this is actually a pretty big drawing. Keep in mind that our pages here are 11 by 14, so it's, it's fairly large. If we want to make some edits to the size, the first thing you can do is grab one of these corners and we can shrink it. Now, if I just grab it, you'll see that it will change in all sorts of crazy proportions. If I hold down the shift key, it will lock at being the right proportion so I don't distort the image. Notice when I do that, you know, I can click and move this around. It shrunk the frame but not the image inside of it, that's a fitting issue. And that's how InDesign works. It treats the image and the frame as two distinctly different things that uh, work together. So while I have that highlighted, um, I could either right click to find this information or come up to the top of the screen. And I'm looking for these fitting options. The main one that you'll use will be the fit content to frame. So if I click that, you'll see that the content inside of the frame adjusted to the new smaller size. I also would have the option here of, you know, if I like working like that, that's fine. You know, I can make this bigger or smaller and just say fit content to frame, and that works fine. If I select this auto fit option, it will react a little bit more like you would expect, where if I 
you know, grow or shrink this box, the image inside changes. So you have some different options there about how you want to work. So I'll just shrink this up a little bit to get it to fit on my page. Also, while you're looking at this frame, take note that there's this little link symbol up here on the, the frame of my floor plan. And that's just showing me that this is a linked image. So when you're doing your uh, you know, file maintenance um, for your project, make sure that you're very neat about it and you keep things in the same location because InDesign actually creates links to your image file. So if you move them around, the links become broken and then your file gets kind of messy. So you really want to avoid that. All right, so that's the link. Okay. So we've brought in our floor plan. All right, that's looking pretty good. And that was just a simple file and place. Okay, so just to go through that one more time, I will come to file and place, and I'll just grab another image. Maybe I'll grab, you know, an interior shot here. Okay, once again, it's you know, stuck on my mouse, if you will, so I can just come in and click, and it will come in at the size that it wants to be. And I can scoot that around make that bigger or smaller and make it fit there and that will be the basic process for bringing in uh, your images notice that in the toolbox you actually have a frame tool so what you can do here if you'll, you'll locate it below the pencil and above the shapes is actually create a frame of any size and proportion that you wanted to. And then we can do a file and place and place it right inside of that. So if we had an image that we wanted to fit inside of that frame, it would go right inside of there. Now, if we want if we had this set up to be a very specific size, we could then just say, you know, fit content to the frame or so on and do it that way. That might be a really good option if you have a whole series of images that you want in very specific locations and you just want them to all fit. Um, that can be a really, really good option. Okay, but either way, it's a file and a place. And that's how you bring in floor plans, renderings, background graphics, furniture, and all of that type of thing. And those will all be going on your pages. And then your master page will have just the basic graphic elements that we're looking for.